Springfield, Ohio has quite an industrial history. Uh, there were a lot of industries here that people may be familiar with. Collier's Magazine was printed here into the 1950s. International Harvester had a massive plant uh, building farm equipment. There was a car manufacturer too, a car company by the name of Westcott, the man's name who owned the company. And he built a very interesting house early in the 20th century. We're going to visit today, learn all about it. Hello, Marta. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Jeff? Good to see you. Great to see you. Well, here we are in front of a really wonderful piece of architecture. Tell me about the house and who designed it. Well, it's really, truly remarkable for, for Ohio to have this house. It was designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, who's probably the most famous architect um, for sure in America. So it's a prairie style home, which was his uh, kind of signature style for the early phase of his career. And the house was uh, designed between 1906 and 1908. Now, why was it called prairie style? You know, this actually um, was not coined by Frank Lloyd Wright himself. And there was a group of architects who were uh, kind of had things in common in terms of style of the architecture. So those beautiful horizontal lines, these houses uh, hug a hill or earth, how they kind of come naturally out of the uh, land as opposed to uh, Victorian uh, architecture, which uh, was much more vertical. Now tell me about the Westcotts. They, um, they were daring in doing this. Absolutely. They were very much interested in um, innovation. They were pursuing uh, their own car company. That was their business, was building automobiles, is that Yes. Right? They came to Springfield because of um, uh, actually producing agricultural machinery. And uh, Burton was really prominent, but he's, it seems like his passion was, uh, was the car. Well, the, the building has been completely restored. But I understand it had kind of a checkered history, too. Yes, well, it's unbelievable to some extent that frankly tried house would uh, fall in such disrepair. But it was in private hands. And from time to time, you know, you had uh, owners that perhaps were not aware of its significance. So after World War II, it was divided into apartments. And that was a big transition for the house. Thank goodness, in early 2000s, the team uh, was put together and resources became available. And they were able to do this multi-million dollar restoration. So it's a nonprofit organization that was formed here in the community. That's right. Supported by people in the community. Well, thank you for all this background information. I understand the house a lot better, but I'd like to see the actual place. Of course, let's go. Oh, wow, yes. <laughs> this is not your grandfather's Victorian mansion. <laughs> this just is so righty in. <laughs> This is spectacular. Now tell me what was here. Clearly it's been restored to the condition it was when Wright finished the place, but you said it had been changed a lot. What was here and what wasn't? They got rid of the table, they got rid of the baseboard, they covered the, the original paint, so it was very a uh, difficult process in the beginning. I, I just want to say that the restoration crew um, was just a group of hopeful dreamers that somehow managed to persevere and uh, it, it was just unbelievable effort. Well, they must have had some kind of guidance, photographs or drawings or something. What did they work from it so that they knew they were doing it right when they were doing the restoration? They had a beautiful set of close to 50 drawings, uh, including a drawing of the table and some furniture that he designed for the house. Oh, where did those drawings come from? Who was holding them at the time you got a hold of them? Uh, Frankly Tried Foundation uh, made it available to us. There is a Frankly Tried Building Conservancy that is a national organization that actually stands stepped in and purchased the house from the original owner to secure it as soon as possible. And then they transferred it, they sold it to the newly established uh, nonprofit. And that's the so, local nonprofit here in right. Springfield. Yes, but it took national collaboration to make this happen. It sounds like it was a rescue just at the right time. So this is the dining room. There's a sideboard, the dining table, <laughs> typical right, lighting fixtures as part of the table, the chairs that you can't really sit in unless you're a robot. <laughs> Those sorts of things. We say that ladies were in their car sets, you know, so they were stiff anyway. <laughs> well, I'm ready to see another space. 
Well, let's go to the living room. Oh, what a fireplace. Yeah, it's amazing and it survived. It was not touched uh, much, except uh, when this was turned into apartments, you can see some uh, vertical marks here mm -hmm. and there. Mm -hmm. But the brick is original, it's called Roman brick. So it's slender and longer. That's what Wright really favored for his uh, homes. So again, that emphasis on horizontal line. Yeah. These benches with the long cushions, the tall backs, they're not original. They were in a part of original uh, setup, so over time, again, a lot of changes happened and they were at some point gone, uh, removed, but uh, again, going back to original drawings, they recreated everything as Frank Lloyd Wright planned, and that was kind of hallmark of his design. He called them Inglenook benches, and those were those cozy places where the family could sit around the, the fireplace, and fireplace was so important. That was kind of a symbolic um, center of the home. So these were built in, but there was movable furniture, and you really had to have, did you have to have reproductions made of all of the movable furniture? Yeah, those uh, those beautiful pieces, like the dining table, like the library table in the reception room, um, they were all recreated from the drawings. The reception room is the third space here on the first floor, is that correct? Yes. So why don't yes. we take a look at that as well? Of course. Lead the way. Mm -hmm. So this is the reception room. Guests would visit. Yes, that's where they would enter this house, and this, there was this big wow factor here. Well, I noticed there, there's leaded glass. That's all reproduction too, is that correct? Yes, all from the drawings. Um, there was uh, one photo, historic photo, that showed a um, China cabinet that has the same pattern, but all of that was recreated by uh, regional and local craftsmen. So we've had a good look at the downstairs, but there's an upstairs. Can we take a look? Absolutely, let's go. Well, that's quite a skylight. I assume that was missing too and had to be replaced. Well, so this was this big surprise that it actually survived all those years. And uh, they were able to just, you know, um, fix a couple things, but the glass was in really good shape, and thank goodness. We're on the second floor. Um, tell me what the arrangement is here. We have bedrooms. Yes, we have six bedrooms, and as you go from uh, the biggest ones, you go to the smaller and smallest, of course, are for servants. They had uh, two ladies living here full time with them, taking care of them. Well, let's have a look at some of the major rooms. Sounds good. Well, this is certainly is one of the major bedrooms. Now, this was an era when husbands and wives didn't necessarily share the same bed, same room. They had separate bedrooms. Uh, you suspect that's the case here? We believe that that's the case. And um, it's really amazing in terms of architecture how these two bedrooms are like a mirrored image. Well, there's a bathroom here, and then there's a door out onto a porch. Mm. You said that's a sleeping porch? Sleeping porch, yes. And they actually apparently, uh, at the time, uh, they were promoting the idea of sleeping porch as a, a healthier alternative to spend your night. Uh, so that was definitely used by the family. And I, I assume in the summer when it was hot, there was no air conditioning in those days. Right. I assume that yes. was for hot weather, yes, at least you're outside, yes, yes. it could be a little cooler. Well, you've done a fabulous job here. It's really a wonderful restoration of a great house. And now the hours it's open are what? It's best to refer to our website, uh, sign up for a tour, because we offer uh, docent guided tours, and that's the best way to experience the house. And of course, in addition, we also serve as a, um, as a center for architecture and design. So we do all kinds of programming with schools, with uh, uh, kids and adults, uh, doing all kinds of workshops that focus on design education. And uh, that, that's just, you know, extension, I think, of, of the spirit of innovation that the family uh, left us. I think that's a great way to put it. And thank you so much for a really great tour. Ah, well, I have something special for you to finish this off. I like surprises. <laughs> what are you going to show me? Well, let's go. Oh, my. Is this, is this a real Westcott? Yes, it is. Tell me the truth. That's our surprise. I have never seen one of these. <laughs> this is wonderful. It is. It's very rare. It's 1920 Westcott car. So it was produced uh, right here in Springfield when the Westcotts lived uh, at their Frankly Tried home. 
What a wonderful machine. Would you like to take a ride? No, well, no, I'm not interested. <laughs> I would love a ride. I really would. Just hop in. Absolutely. Thanks. Go ahead. Hello. Hey. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, that's okay. All right. Let's go. Thank you.